If you say it fast enough, it sounds like a martial art. Hachido. <laughs> I, uh, I'm celebrating a little something uh, tonight. Last year I decided I wanted to lose some weight and get into shape. And I'm happy to say I, I stepped on the scale this morning and I am officially down 153 pounds, so I'm kind of excited about that. So, thank you. Thank you. That's very nice. Most of you are like, that's good, but I see some of you trying to do the math in your head like, how fat were you? Because you're still kind of fat. Yes, at my heaviest, I weighed 404 pounds. Yeah, some strange stuff happens at 404 pounds. Ever step on a scale and see it smoke? <laughs> or have a talking scale yell, uncle? <laughs> now, I, I like being honest about my weight. I think it's important because I have a friend of mine who was roughly my size when I started, claims to be a vegetarian. Like, stop lying, there are no 400 pound vegetarians. <laughs> or if they are, they're like a cow or a horse or something. <laughs> I was like, hey man, you wanna get some burgers? He's like, oh no, dude, I'm a vegetarian. And I was like, really? Is it your first day? <laughs> He's like, no man, I've been having vegetables for months now. I'm like, dude, are you dipping them in chocolate? <laughs> so I don't think you're doing this right, you know? I, uh, I found out I was uh, heavy in a pretty strange way. I found out I was fat because I dropped something on the floor. And I was just like, oh no. <laughs> Honey, do we need that? <laughs> well, I guess I'm gonna have to get another driver's license. <laughs> and I also found out, because I take a lot of pictures doing this, I, I would see pictures of myself and I'm like, man, I am huge. And my friends would all try to make me feel better. They'd say that thing about the camera, you know, that the camera adds 70 pounds. <laughs> Or it's like, oh yeah, the camera adds 10 pounds, the camera adds 10 pounds. That's not true. Because I look at a group photo, I'm like, well, wait a minute. How come everybody else looks normal? Is there some sort of Instagram fat filter that gives me everybody's weight? This is ridiculous, you know? So I don't know, I, uh, I tried uh, doing some different diets and uh, the biggest thing that kind of turned me around was my doctor kind of lit into me. My doctor was like, Brian, man, we're gonna do something about your weight. And I don't know why my doctor sounds like Hulk Hogan, but he does. <laughs> Just came in, ripped his jacket off. And what you gonna do, brother, when high cholesterol runs wild on you? <laughs> no, he did. He goes, Brian, he goes, I don't mean to sound mean, but based on your height and your weight on the BMI chart, you're what we classify as super morbidly obese. I was like, super morbidly obese? That is the worst superhero ever. <laughs> what am I running around just like, I am super morbidly obese man with my trusty sidekick pizza delivery boy <laughs> and my arch enemy broccoli. <laughs> like, there are no superpowers. People aren't at a party like, we have all this leftover food at the party. What are we going to do? I come running in, help, no fear. Are you gonna finish those? Okay, um. So yeah, I, uh, I did, I, I found out I was fat and it was kind of weird. And people go, well, how'd you get up to 404 pounds? Shouldn't you like stop eating? And my problem is I would always justify my bad decisions, you know? But the problem is the voice in my brain that would tell me was Homer Simpson. So I'd wake up and I'm like, ah, oh, today I'm gonna eat healthy. And my brain was like, oh, but you had an apple last month. It's like, yeah, that was a good apple. What is your favorite kind of apple? Pie. <laughs> so it's fun. The other thing I found out too is I found out that I had an unhealthy relationship with food. Like there's one food that calls out to you. And for me, it's chocolate. I'm a huge chocoholic, right? And chocolate and I were no good together. So we had to split up, you know? But chocolate will still call to me at like one in the morning, like an old girlfriend, just like, hi, Brian. What are you doing? And I'm like, oh, leave me alone, chocolate. I just thought maybe we could get together like we used to. I'm with broccoli now. 
Yeah, but are you happy? <laughs> Broccoli's boring. You ever sneak broccoli into the movies? No. <laughs> You're like, leave me alone, chocolate. And you know, chocolate calls back five minutes later singing that Lady Antebellum song. It's a quarter after one. I'm all alone and I need you now. <laughs> I'll be right over, chocolate. <laughs> So yeah, it's, uh, it's been, it's been kind of interesting. Um, you know, the biggest thing that I, that I found with, with trying to lose weight is there's all sorts of different diets, like I said, and uh, I had to lose weight before it. And so what I, people go, what'd you end up doing? And so what I ended up doing was I changed how I ate and I got a thing called gastric sleeve surgery, which is this two hour surgery where they remove about 85% of your stomach. And I would tell my friends this before the surgery and I had like 10 friends ask me the dumbest question ever. They were like, are you gonna be asleep for the whole surgery? Gosh, I hope so. Like, what am I gonna do, hand them stuff? Like, they're cutting out my stomach. What am I gonna entertain them with, family guy voices? Like, hey, Dirk, what are you doing? <laughs> hey, uh, Peter, check it out. They're cutting out your stomach, giggity, giggity. All right. Oh, you nasty leaving his stomach on the table. You nasty. <laughs> I like that. Half of you watch Family Guy, the other half are looking at me like I'm a screensaver right now. Like... <laughs> so yeah, it's a, uh, I don't know, it's just been kind of uh, an interesting thing. And um, so I had to lose weight, and uh, so they were like, yeah, you should be healthy. So I took Taekwondo for a little while. I took the martial art Taekwondo. And uh, by a little while, I mean one class. Uh, it was an online class. Uh, <laughs> And apparently, they don't plug you in like into a computer like they do in the movie The Matrix. You don't come out all Keanu Reeves like, well, I knew Kung Fu. <laughs> so what I did, because I wanted to sound cool, is I just skipped the class and I ate hot Cheetos instead. It's way easier because if you say it fast enough, it sounds like a martial art, hot Cheeto. <laughs> I knew hot Cheeto. <laughs> So yeah, it's, it's been crazy, you know, I'm glad I'm losing weight. Uh, I had to lose weight before my surgery, and uh, so I tried uh, a couple of diets. I tried Weight Watchers, that didn't work for me. And their whole thing is they convert calories to points. And uh, basically, you, they give you a certain number of points based on how much weight you need to lose. And I had 62 points a day, right? And they was like, oh, count your food, count your points. Oh, trust me, I'm counting. I was like the count from Sesame Street. One, one bag of Hershey's Kisses. Ah, 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 ah. Two sleeves of Thin Mints. Ah, 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 ah. That's half a point. <laughs> the other thing that I always get to when I was trying to lose weight, people would always come to me and go, Brian, you know what, you want to lose weight? Have salad. Have a salad. Have you heard of salad? Salad. <laughs> Fill up on salad. <laughs> yeah, nothing fills me up like a big bowl of dead leaves. Oh, tasty. <laughs> and I can prove to you that salad's not that great. You know those jelly beans they have that have every flavor in the world? Yeah, no lettuce flavor. <laughs> yeah, they have disgusting flavors, which means that you'll sat over the lettuce. <laughs> so they get down to like a couple and they're like, uh, do you guys want to do uh, lettuce? And they're like, can we do earwax instead? <laughs> yeah, I vote for earwax. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's kind of weird. And what I really like about it though is uh, there's this whole movement out there now called uh, body positivity or body positive. And it's geared uh, a, a lot towards women. So not, no matter how big or how small a woman is, she can be confident and she can feel attractive. And I think it's great. You know, a woman would be like, I'm not fat, I'm curvy. <laughs> and confident, you know? I think that's awesome, but they don't have that for men. You can't be 400 pounds shuffling up to somebody and just be like, hey baby. I'm not fat, I'm, I'm lumpy. I'm lethargic. No woman's ever been like, oh, you're so attractive when you wheeze doesn't happen. 
So uh, my wife and I actually play board games. That's how we get our physical activity in. <laughs> and uh, we never play like the, uh, the new games. We always play the old school games that always end up in a fight, like Monopoly. Has anyone ever finished a game of Monopoly and been like, that was really fun? Like, no. It's always like, they're not welcome in this house ever again. Those are our children. I don't care. You know? And this happened because we played Pictionary, which is the drawing game. And I hate Pictionary because I'm competitive and I want to win. And every time I play Pictionary, I get teamed up with like the idiot that can't draw. Like they get a clue like ice cream cone and they mess that up somehow. They draw this squiggly thing on the board and just point at it for 60 seconds, like... <laughs> what am I playing with Scooby-Doo? Reggie! Huh? And I'm like, dude, draw something, draw anything, like help me out. So instead of drawing more, they just circle it really fast, like... Hey. I'm like, hey, thanks for helping out, Da Vinci, you know? <laughs> and then whenever it's my turn to draw, I get like the worst possible things to draw. They get all the easy stuff, like door or window. I get up there, I get words like, viral meningitis, like, come on! <laughs> I don't even know the symptoms. All right, I got a guy bleeding out of the eyes. Does this help anybody? <laughs> come on, he's bleeding out of the eyes! <laughs> I was gonna stop doing that joke a few years ago because it's an old joke, but uh, true story, a few years ago, I ended up getting viral meningitis. <laughs> so now that I know that my jokes come true, I'm gonna do material about winning the lottery. <laughs> I played tonight. <laughs> and I have friends who are like, if I won $100 million, nobody would know I won. And I'm the opposite. If I won $100 million, everybody would know. I would buy ads on TV of me counting my money like, hey! All the names of like exes and people who didn't like me when scrolling by in the back. <laughs> They're getting none of it, none of it. Some of you may have noticed this about me. I actually have facial paralysis on the left side of my face. Got it a few years ago from this thing called Ramsey Hunt syndrome and I'm doing better now, so please don't feel bad. And uh, my whole thing is this, uh, and you can take this with you tonight if you want. If you can laugh at something that causes you pain, you take away the power it holds over you. And I truly believe that. So like uh, Ramsey Hunt, for example, that doesn't even sound like a medical condition. No, Ramsey Hunt sounds like the name of a country singer, doesn't it? <laughs> and here's Ramsey Hunt singing a smash hit, I can't feel my face when I'm with you. <laughs> So I did, I got hearing loss, I got vision loss, I got vertigo, I got like the collector's edition, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so my face slid down and my eye didn't blink for well over nine months. Now, when your eye doesn't blink for nine months, you see some weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, you like sneeze with one eye open and unicorns appear, you're like, oh, sweet. <laughs> but on the bright side, I was doing awesome at staring contests, like, come on. <laughs> I'll take you all on, you know? <laughs> and I had total hearing loss in my left ear, so if I turned my head this way, I could hear fine. If I turned my head this way, I'd hear nothing. And people go, how do you deal with that? It was awesome. My wife would be complaining to me, and i just go, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, she just went around to the good ears. She was like, don't you turn your head on me, you know? <laughs> And I still have paralysis, so like parts of my mouth don't work and this eyebrow doesn't raise. And people go, oh, that stinks, you can't raise both eyebrows. But I found a positive. I can never be surprised anymore. <laughs> yeah, I can only be inquisitive. <laughs> really? <laughs> Interesting. And my wife was like super cool about it. She was so supportive. She'd take me out to dinner to like keep me socially active. And it just backfired because I felt like a big old creepy troll, you know? And so I'm a comedian, so I would just ham it up a little bit and embarrass her. We'd go out to dinner and I'd just be like, excuse me, sir. <laughs> I 
We would like a table for two in a small dark corner, preferably under the table. Oh, thank you. You know, you feel like people are staring at you like, excuse me, sir, do you have a napkin I can drape over the left side of my face? It's so I don't frighten the children. Oh, thank you. You know, you're ordering dinner, you're like, excuse me, sir, the little lady will have the lobster ravioli and I'll have a small goat. Uh, so, my last name is uh, pronounced April. Uh, it's spelled A-P-P-R-I-L-L-E, you know, just like the month. And, uh, and have, because of that, I always had like uh, limited dating choices when I was growing up, when I was single. You know, I'd meet somebody, I'd be like, hi, I'm Brian, nice to meet you, what's your name? She's like, oh, hi, I'm April. I'm like, I don't think it's gonna work out, April. Uh, <laughs> Because no matter how much a woman loves you, she's not changing her name to April April. This isn't Little Caesar's Pizza Pizza going on, you know? And I always found it interesting when people name their kids after like a theme. Like I have a friend of mine, uh, she and all her siblings are named after flowers. Like her name is Rose, and then there's Iris and there's Lily. And Lily, he hates it. <laughs> not happy. So, uh, no, my wife has been so uh, supportive of me. She's the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. We've been together uh, about 19, almost 20 years now, and uh, we don't fight a lot, which is awesome. You know, that's my favorite thing about it. We, we don't fight. The biggest thing we used to fight about was driving, and that was before, you know, GPS was there. It would just be my wife would yell at me that I didn't know where I was going. And now, thankfully, because of GPS, I have two women telling me I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> And they have, drive, they have uh, voice packages you can get for GPS. And I think they should have training packages for single people so they know what it's gonna be like when they're married. <laughs> like they could have the exasperated wife package. And that's where you miss a turn and it just goes. <sighs> <laughs> Rerouting. <laughs> Again. <laughs> right, and then they could have the stubborn husband package. That would be kind of fun. That's where you put an address into the system and a voice comes on and goes, I know where I'm going. <laughs> and it shuts right off. <laughs> when we first got a car with uh, GPS in it, I remember my wife actually got into an argument with the computer. It was just kind of odd. It was like, turn left here. And my wife's like, ah, uh, no. <laughs> It's like four more blocks, then you turn. What a waste of money. And I was like, yeah, but it says, so she's like, listen to me, I'm your wife, I know where I'm going, don't listen to that. And it's just awkward because you have this thing that's 100% accurate every single time. And then you have this GPS system. <laughs> now, if you uh, didn't get that, uh, <laughs> Just means that she's always right. <laughs> no, so uh, I, I, I don't do any uh, controversial stuff. This is probably the closest I come. And I, I just want to say in this day and age, I just want us to come together as one collective group of people and, and humans and society. Can we please just come together and agree that Pablo Picasso was not a good painter? Can we please do that? <laughs> Can we please? I mean, I'm no art major or anything like that, but I know like the basics. I know like Raphael and Michelangelo and the other Ninja Turtles. <laughs> And we went to go see a, a, Picasso, a Picasso exhibit and it was just like all crazy. There was this whole section where it was all in one color. And so I said to the lady there, I'm like, why is everything in one color? You know, did he run out of crayons or whatever? And, uh, and she goes, she got kind of snippy with me. She's like, sir, quite frankly, people who know and understand art know that this is called Picasso's blue period. And quite frankly, sir, people who know and understand art think some of the best art is Picasso's blue period. And I said, well, quite frankly, ma'am, I think Picasso blue, period. <laughs> I like doing uh, impressions for people, especially when they're not expecting them. Like I'll be in a grocery store, I'll see like a couple in line and he's like, honey, I forgot the milk, I'll be right back. I go into Morgan Freeman right there. And that was the last time I saw Andy. <laughs> It's 
some birds aren't meant to be caged. <laughs> the new one I do is uh, Alan Rickman, who was Professor Snape from Harry Potter. Any Harry Potter fans? All right, I'll teach you how to do his voice. It's really easy. So in the 90s, there was a movie called Austin Powers and a character named Dr. Evil, right? So if you want to do Snape, you just take Dr. Evil and his sharks with lasers, and you turn that voice down, and you turn that voice down, and you turn that voice down. <laughs> and you are left with Alan Rickman. And I love him. Like, he could be getting attacked in a movie. He's always calm and cool. He's like, will someone please help me? I'm being mauled by a tiger. <laughs> How unfortunate. <laughs> it is my goal in life now to make Alan Rickman be the voice of Alexa. That is my goal in life. <laughs> Like, how awesome would that be, you know? Like, hey, Snape, what's the weather gonna be like today? Dreary. <laughs> this is how it's gonna be? Always. Uh, oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so yeah, I like having fun with, uh, with voices and all that sort of stuff. Um, I, <laughs> But now, like, that I'm getting, um, now that I've lost a bunch of weight, I have uh, people who want me to go camping with them, and I hate camping. If you like camping, I'm sorry, I just, I just don't like it. And they get all mad at you, they're like, oh, you know what it is? You know what your problem is? Your problem is, you've never had a good experience camping. <laughs> and I'm like, that's exactly my problem. <laughs> I've never had a good experience camping. <laughs> And they're like, oh, you're gonna love it. We're so much fun. First, we're gonna march 10 miles into the woods, and we're gonna stop at a little place called Mosquito's Landing. It's wonderful. It overlooks Ebola Lake. It's beautiful. And then late at night, when you're trying to sleep, you get to play a fun little game of what the heck is that noise? Do you know that squirrels and bears make the exact same noise in the dark? Do you know that? And then there's the bugs, and I hate the bugs, and they're like, oh, don't worry about the bugs. We have this organic, gluten-free bug spray. <laughs> oh, does it work well? It doesn't work at all. <laughs> it just seasons you for the bears. <laughs> In fact, you stand next to the fire. They love the mesquite flavor. <laughs> I'm just swatting away. My shirt's on like a loincloth. I look like I'm in Lord of the Flies. <laughs> 10 minutes go by, I look like a deranged tap dancer, like... Half hour goes by, I get like mud on my face. I look like I'm doing one of those Hawaiian hakas, like, Gamate, Gamate, Gula! Gamate, Gamate, Gula! Brian, are you okay? Gamate, Gamate, Gula! And then I go get some chocolate. Uh, uh, I, uh, I apologize, I'm sweating tonight. This is my cardio for the evening, so I apologize for that. Uh, man, it's, my Fitbit exploded. Uh, just getting some breath for this last bit. Uh, I did a show and someone was like, do that again. And I'm like, you want me to pass out? What do you want me to do? It's the cool down session of my set, you know. <sighs> no. Uh, so I'll tell you this and I'll get out of here. People always complain about cartoons that they don't, uh, they're not good for you. They don't teach anything, they rot your brain, and, and that's not true. I used to watch a show called Animaniacs. Any Animaniac fans here? <laughs> so there was a character named Yako. He was like, hello, nurse, right? Loved him. I learned the nations of the world at that time by that show. You guys know what I'm talking about? The song started off slow, ended up fast. All right, here we go. 
United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru, Republic, Dominican, Cuba, Caribbean, Greenland, El Salvador, too, Puerto Rico, Colombia, Venezuela, Honduras, Guiana, and still, Guatemala, Bolivia, then Argentina, and Ecuador, Chile, Brazil, Costa Rica, Belize, Nicaragua, Bermuda, Bahamas, Tobago, San Juan, Paraguay, Uruguay, Surahem, and Frisky, Guiana, Barbados, and Guam, Norway, and Sweden, and Iceland, and Finland, and Germany, now in peace, Switzerland, Austria, Czechoslovakia, Italy, Turkey, and Greece, Poland, Romania, Scotland, Albania, Ireland, Russia, Oman, Bulgaria, Saudi Arabia, Hungary, Cyprus, Iraq, and Iran, and Syria, Lebanon, Israel, Jordan, both Yemen, Kuwait, and Bahrain, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, Belgium, and Portugal, France, England, Denmark, and Spain, sing along! India, Pakistan, Burma, Afghanistan, Thailand, Nepal, and Bhutan, Cambodia, Malaysia, then Bangladesh, Asia, and China, Korea, Japan, Mongolia, Laos, and Tibet, Indonesia, the Philippine Islands, Taiwan, Sri Lanka, New Guinea, Sumatra, New Zealand, and Borneo, and Vietnam, Tunisia, Morocco, Uganda, Angola, Zimbabwe, Djibouti, Botswana, Mozambique, Zambia, Swaziland, Gambia, Guinea, Algeria, Ghana, last one, Burundi, Lesotho, and Malawi, Togo, Spanish, Sahara, and John, Niger, Nigeria, Chad, and Liberia, Egypt, and Gabon, Tanzania, Somalia, Kenya, and Mali, Sierra Leone, and Algeria, Dahomey, Namibia, Senegal, Libya, Cameroon, Congo, Zaire, Ethiopia, Guinea, Bissau, Madagascar, Rwanda, my horn came on, Hong Kong, Abu Dhabi, Kitao, Yugoslavia, Cream, Mauritania, then Transylvania, Monaco, Lichester, Mountain, Palestine, Fiji, Australia, Sudan, good night, everybody. <laughs>